Hey there, everyone. Today I'm here to talk to you about my transition from being a student to becoming an engineer here at AT&T. I want to specifically talk to you about how you can navigate that transition from a student to joining the workforce, how you can produce results in your role despite dealing with ambiguity and complexity in your job, how to manage those feelings of imposter syndrome that might arise, and how you can grow in your career and find your passion. And I think the best way to illustrate that to you is to tell you my story. I started off college as a chemistry major, actually. I was also, like Natalie, determined on going to medical school and becoming a doctor. Now, conveniently at the time, almost every single one of my friends was a computer science student. So, when we're sitting in the library studying together, I couldn't help but overhear about the different projects and the different coursework that they were going through. I couldn't help but just be that little bit curious, you know? So I'd ask them questions, I'd learn a little bit here and there, and I'd try to offer my, albeit naive, help uh, to their projects when I could. And that sparked something in me. I started to see the value in what they were learning, and I honestly kind of wanted to pursue it too, but not enough just yet. The real turning point happened for me, though, in the year of 2018, where I was interning down in Irvine, California at the Reeve Irvine Research Center. Our research mainly focused on seeing if gene therapies had taken effect in spinal cellular tissue in mice to spur cellular regeneration. Really, really cool work. I loved that research. What I didn't love so much, though, was how manual and how subjective our process was. We'd spend hours often locked in a dark room, looking at slides under a microscope, trying to pick out exactly where on the tissue sample our gene therapies had taken effect. It was after maybe the third or fourth time of us identifying another false positive that I decided I needed to find a new way to approach this. That very same night, I went home and I researched how can I build a program that automates this process for us. I ended up building a Python script after about 10 hours of research and a lot of trial and error. It overlaid the two images taken from microscope, ran an algorithm over the two images, and identified for me which specific regions had been taken effect by our gene therapy. That was the moment for me. I decided that I wanted to go ahead and become a software engineer. Now we go ahead and cut to 2021, where I graduated from the University of Washington with a degree in computer science. Now I know we are in Longhorn country, but I can't help but say it, go dogs, throw those doves up. <laughs> My passion today still continues, where I am now pursuing here at UT my degree in, as a master's in artificial intelligence. <laughs> I knew you guys would like that one. <laughs> um, but so, it was that transition from being a student to becoming an engineer that has taught me some of the most valuable lessons of my life. And some lessons that I wish someone had shared with me when I was in your position today. Our first lesson is about adaptability. You see, when I first joined AT&T, it was at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you all know, that means everything was fully remote. So an already tough transition was just that much more difficult for me. I struggled to communicate effectively with my peers and my leadership. I found it hard to understand the dynamics of the teams that I was joining. And I even struggled with simple things. How do I ask someone for help? Now, I do realize that the world has shifted. Most people are back in the office space. but. Those challenges still exist, just in a different way. You still need to figure out how you can collaborate with the people you work with, how to communicate effectively with your leadership, and how to meet the expectations that are of your role. But that wasn't the only challenge I faced. The other one was bridging that gap between the theoretical knowledge that I've been taught for the last three years as a part of my computer science curriculum, and applying that to these complex, often novel, real-world problems. What helped me, though, was leaning heavily on the resources that were made available to me. I would incessantly reach out to my mentors and my senior engineers, asking them questions, not worried about, you know, a stupid question. I would attend every single training session I could, even if it wasn't directly related to the work that I was assigned to. I'd also spend time on my own, researching, trying to learn, and try to build that confidence in my technical abilities. Now, change is hard. Don't get me wrong. I understand that, and so do most people. 
But adaptability is the key to life, and change is inevitable. Change doesn't come easy, but I promise you that it is worth it in the end. As I started to settle in, though, other feelings started to take effect. Like many other people having to join the workforce, I too had to deal with feelings of anxiety brought on by imposter syndrome. For me, and about 58% of the over 9 million people that worked in the tech industry in 2024, imposter syndrome wasn't just a feeling at any one moment or point in time. It was a constant nagging voice in the back of your head telling you things like, what if they think I'm a fraud? I don't belong here. I only got here because you're lucky. I'm going to fail. These thoughts kept ringing true as, during my early days at AT&T. I was under so much stress trying to determine if I was delivering to the expectations that they had of me in my role. Now, like I mentioned before, the challenge wasn't just transitioning to that new environment, dealing with new people and new ways of communication. It was also converting this knowledge I had and trying to find ways to apply it in meaningful ways. I'd often find myself in meetings struggling to bring up ideas because I felt my lack of experience compared to my teammates meant I wasn't allowed to have a say. I was scared to ask questions out of fear of being, oh, he doesn't know anything. He, why is he here? But what I didn't realize at that point in time was those feelings weren't being imposed upon me by anyone else. Nobody was restricting my ability to speak up. They were in my head. And I was only doing myself a disservice by not speaking my mind. Now, when it comes to bridging that gap between technical knowledge and you know, applying it to real problems, you might be used to the fact that our homework assignments in university were pretty well defined. They are meant to teach you a set of concepts and ideas. They have guidelines, rules for you to follow. In the tech industry, that doesn't really exist. They're never that clear cut or well defined. You'll have to navigate these complex new issues and find ways to apply what you've learned year over year in that setting to deliver. What helped me though? was joining as a member of the Technology Development Program. Now, for some context, the Technology Development Program, also known as TDP, is a 24-month-long rotational program, which is purpose-built for college graduates to help ease that transition from being a student to an employee as a part of the workforce. TDP offered me a support system through a cohort of peers who were, despite not being assigned to the same projects or working on the same things, we're dealing with a lot of the same challenges that I was. I got assigned mentors, senior engineers, who had already been through this program, who could help answer my questions and help me figure out how to face the challenges I was dealing with. They also fostered this growth mindset amongst all of us by hosting innovation challenges, hackathons, workshops. They emphasized skills like self-advocacy. They taught us how to own the work that we'd done, how to present it in front of an audience and to our leadership. It was at that moment that I started to build confidence and I started to focus on continually growing in my role and making sure that I stayed on top of the different trends of the tech industry. Now, I am a firm believer that there is no one right way for a person to learn. Whether you're going for a master's program through a formal education environment, or maybe you're taking online courses, doing specialization programs through platforms like Coursera or Udemy, or maybe you're just building something on the side with your buddies, whatever it might be, I encourage you to take that time to continue growing and to foster that curiosity inside of yourself. Because at the end of the day, that is what's gonna allow you to set yourself apart. It was once I embraced this feeling of continuous learning and started driving down that path that I realized where I wanted to focus my career on. Now, through my three and a half years here at at and I have had the opportunity to work on a multitude of different teams. I've had the chance to be exposed to different layers of the tech stack and the different niches of software engineering. I've worked on front-end development, back-end development, how to build scalable performance systems, and now I find myself working on building data pipelines and AI projects. If I hadn't taken that time to explore and jump around those teams and experience those different roles, I would not be here today standing in front of you. I encourage you, again, exploration is not wasted time. It's how you figure out where your impact is most, where you figure out where your passions lie. 
foster that curiosity, and try to find your niche. And now, as I stand here today, looking back on my three and a half years here at at and from a student in chemistry to a senior big data engineer, I take away one thing. It's that growth is not linear, and it is hardly ever easy. But challenges will come, and opportunities will present themselves to you. What I encourage you to take away from this today is that embrace feelings of continuous learning. Embrace that curiosity. Overcome those feelings of imposter syndrome because you got that role because you earned it. This journey is uniquely yours. Nobody else can do it but you. It's the beginning of the wonderful innovator, engineer, and problem solver that you'll become. Thank you.